Toto Wolff knows it for sure. Hamilton would have won the Hungary Grand Prix if it wasn't for the DRS problem on Saturday. With five back-to-back -back podiums, Hamilton is currently working on an impressive comeback. He had a rough start of the season due to severe porpoising issues with his car. Often, Hamilton sacrificed himself during the Friday practice sessions to find long-term solutions for Mercedes porpoising issues. Since the upgrades in Canada and Silverstone, most of these problems have been solved, and Hamilton is right back at the top of the field again. If it wasn't for the safety car in Silverstone at the end of the race, Hamilton might have a good chance of winning his home Grand Prix. Although Hamilton finished 40 seconds behind Leclerc in Austria, our Austria analysis showed that when Hamilton and Leclerc were on the same tire strategy, Hamilton actually gained 1.5 seconds in 18 laps time. More surprising was the lack of pace of Mercedes in France after Total Wolf had such high expectations before the Grand Prix weekend. With a bit of luck from Leclerc's crash and Carlos Saints, who had to start from the back of the field, Hamilton nonetheless was ruthless and claimed second place behind Max Verstappen. But what is most interesting is Hamilton's incredible pace during the Hungary Grand Prix, where he fought himself back from P7 to P2, finishing eight seconds behind Verstappen. This is an even bigger achievement when we take into account how difficult it is to overtake on the Hungaro ring and the terrible Friday practice sessions Mercedes had. With great overtakes, race pace, and strategy, Hamilton finished second. But Total Wolf now claims that he should have won the race if it wasn't for his DRS problem on Saturday, which caused him to start seventh. But is this true? Was Hamilton's race pace that good to secure the race win if he started closer to the front? How did Mercedes improve their car during the weekend? How was Hamilton's race pace compared to his teammate George Russell? And where did Hamilton gain so much time on the drive starting in front? Let's find out. Lewis Hamilton is an icon and legend in Formula One. With 103 poles and race wins and seven world titles, we can only respect his achievements. Yet, there were doubts at the beginning of the season as to whether he lost his race craft as he was consistently beaten by his teammate George Russell. However, the last couple races show that Hamilton still possesses great race craft and didn't lose his capability to overtake cars. Hamilton frequently complained about his car at the beginning of the season, but that has been completely turned around, and Hamilton now shows great ambition and motivation to catch Ferrari and Red Bull. The Hungary Grand Prix seemed perfect for a great result of Hamilton, as the Mercedes car suited the track well, as I explained in an earlier video. Mercedes has great traction and the car performs well in slow and medium speed corners, where mechanical grip is crucial. Surprisingly, Mercedes experienced a horrible start of the Hungary Grand Prix on Friday. Both cars experienced an enormous lack of grip and were sliding everywhere. After the practice sessions, both Russell and Hamilton complained about too much over and understeer. The car was unpredictable in the corners, and this led to a one-second gap to Leclerc on Friday. Hamilton admitted that he didn't understand why they are so far behind, as the car is exactly the same as the prior week, and he is still the same driver. Toto Wolff was devastated after the Friday sessions and said that his team needs to understand why their performance fluctuates so much per track. Wolff continued by saying that Mercedes so far could rely on good race pace and that they mainly have to improve their one-lap pace. But after the Friday practice sessions, Wolf was worried and confused about the big gap to Ferrari in both race trim and one-lap pace. So what setup changes caused the incredible comeback of Mercedes? The lower temperature on Saturday and Sunday allowed for a more aggressive setup as tire degradation was significantly less. In a weekend where Mercedes brought only minor updates, Mercedes had to tweak their setup to improve downforce levels and get rid of their over- and understeering issues. Mercedes changed their differential setting to a more open setting, allowing the cars to rotate at different speeds and causing a more gradual transition of the power supplied. This improved overall traction and reduced oversteer when going on the throttle coming out of a corner. Because of the lower temperatures and less tire degradation, Mercedes could also run a lower level of camber and increase the surface of the tire that is in direct contact with the track, and therefore improved responsiveness and grip levels. Finally, Mercedes adds a new component to the existing rear wing to create more downforce and drag, and therefore reduce oversteer. The new front wing used during the weekend created more downforce at the front and helped with preventing understeer. 
Now that we know how Mercedes made their cars faster during the weekend, we can analyze Hamilton's race by using the official telemetry provided by F1. The telemetry shows that on the first run of Q3, before Hamilton's DRS failure, Hamilton was 0.174 seconds behind his teammate Russell. Hamilton lost most of his time in the high-speed corners 4 and 11. However, due to his DRS failure and a quickly improving track, Hamilton ended 0.765 seconds behind his teammate, who claimed the first pole position of his career. When looking at the telemetry, we can see that Russell, who started first, pulled away from Hamilton in the first 10 laps. This was due to two reasons. The first one is that Russell started on the soft tires, whereas Hamilton started on the mediums. This gave Russell a pace advantage in the early stages of the race. A second reason, which made the time difference even bigger, is the fact that Hamilton was stuck behind Lando Norris, who was clearly struggling with his soft tires. Norris was finally overtaken by Hamilton in lap 12 and gave Hamilton a clear track to drive his own pace. By the time Hamilton was finally clear, he was already 11 seconds behind his teammate George Russell. But how was Hamilton's race pace when he finally had a clear track? In the remaining five laps before Russell made his first pit stop, Hamilton was gaining time every single lap. By the time Russell made his pit stop, Hamilton was 10 seconds behind Russell. Hamilton made his own pit stop in lap 21 to go for another set of medium tires. At this time, Russell's medium tires were five laps old, but in those five laps, Russell increased his lead over Hamilton. However, it becomes clear when looking at the telemetry that Hamilton outpaced his teammate every single lap after his pit stop. A major part of this catch-up has to do with the fact that Russell and Leclerc were in a fierce battle from lap 26 to lap 31. The difference between the race leader, Russell, and Hamilton was 14 seconds at lap 27. By the time Leclerc overtook Russell in lap 31, the gap was brought back to 11.7 seconds. Up until lap 33, Hamilton was the fastest man on track, but then saw a drop-off in pace as he needed to manage his tires for the long stint ahead. Because Hamilton was able to extend his tires till lap 51, he was able to get to push on the soft tires for his last stint and made up crucial time. Hamilton was 1 to 1.5 seconds quicker than any other driver at the front of the field and quickly overtook both Saints and Russell. So would Hamilton have won the race if he started from pole position? F1 made a simulation on the race results based on the race data and Hamilton starting from pole. The data included similar tire strategies and race pace. Hamilton's pit stop in lap 19 would have emerged him third behind Russell and Leclerc and would have caught them between lap 25 to 30. When making his second and final pit stop in lap 51, Hamilton would have stayed ahead of Saints and the gap between Hamilton and Verstappen would have been much smaller to cross. The simulation showed that Hamilton would have had a real chance of fighting Verstappen and winning the race. However, what these simulations don't take into account is Verstappen's engine issues on Saturday and Ferrari's dramatic strategy on Sunday. Nonetheless, Hamilton's pace was similar to Verstappen and Leclerc before the different tire strategies made a one-on-one -on -one comparison difficult to make. Although Toto Wolff's statements about Hamilton winning the race may be a bit too enthusiastic as he didn't take into account Red Bull's engine problems and Ferrari's bad strategy, he does have a point to state that Hamilton had the pace to fight for the win if he started farther in front of the field. With the upcoming upgrades after the summer break, Mercedes hopes to finally be able to win their first race of the season. What do you think? Do you think Hamilton could have won the Hungary Grand Prix? Let me know in the comments section below.